I V M. Everybody, welcome to a, a very special episode of the Geek Food Podcast. Uh, uh, I'm Tejas. This week, uh, I have Jishnu and a very special guest, Siddharth Mehta, who was recently on our other show, Crossover Event. Hi, Sid. How's it going? And Jishnu. How's it going? What's up, guys? Hello. Hi, Tejas. Hi, Jishnu. See what I did? Excellent. No, what see? did you do? I said San. It's a subtle, oh, it's he's, a subtle nod he's keeps, to our uh, subject matter. See? Okay, okay, okay. All see, right. See uh, let's, uh, let's, let's ignore that. I know things. I know things. He does. You do know things. Yeah. You do know things. No one has ever questioned whether you knew things. Uh, you do know them. If they, they did question have. you, they you would. Uh, they would be solely disappointed because you do know things. All right, guys. First off, I have some uh, bad news. Um, well, uh, given the situation that we're all in uh, in the world, uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's. Um, we're all going to be taking some um, pay cuts at Geek Fruit. Um, this is uh, important for us to acknowledge because uh, we won't be able to pay the other employees and to keep them, you know, we, as the founders, uh, Jishnu, you, I, Dinkar, you know, we, you know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, take, <laughs> we gotta, we gotta take I'm, shut I'm, it down I'm letting you go with this. I'll see how this turns out. Uh, and, interested uh, in how and you deliver important. the news it's, and the news. It, it's a, it's important because. Uh, because we're thinking about others and that's what geek fruit does it thinks about others sid uh, any thoughts so you you guys are taking pay cuts and the other guys involved in geek fruit yes the so others you can keep their jobs basically so we can keep their jobs we've so not yeah. employed anyone yet but yeah. when yeah. eventually we do they can keep their jobs that's what it's yeah. a long term yeah, investment these pay cuts yeah, yeah of course yeah. it's the future we got to look it's at it's to save uh, money that we don't have money. for people that we don't know and the pay that you don't get <laughs> Exactly. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's forward thinking in so many ways. I, I hope other people learn from this example and also take pay cuts for their companies that don't it's exist. It's the greater good, as, uh, as uh, a young Brutus once said. Uh, right. He died shortly after. But I, yeah. I, will, um, I will leave this episode uh, uh, today entirely in your very capable hands, uh, Sid Mehta, because uh, today we're going to be talking about um, a subject which is an area of your expertise, which is anime, um, something that you decided and uh, forced us to do. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. so I, I, I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat my masala upma okay. and uh, recount the tales of anime uh, that Jishnu and I are enthralled to hear. Okay, great. Tejas, yep. by the way, I love that you're not playing into any stereotypes by eating upma. You know, hey, hey, one second, one second. I, upma is a universal Indian thing, isn't it? Mostly, I want to say it's like ma, like Central India, North India, and South India. Everyone has upma, right? No, I don't know if the I don't know if the North, uh, like I don't know if the North has upma as much. Maybe like not um, towards the Northeast and stuff. I think any place like north of the Russian. South doesn't have upma as much. That's true. That's maybe, what Jishnu said. Said is pretty true. Jishnu. You being Beng- Bengali, Bengali, Bengali yeah, show. exactly. Yeah, is is upma very big in Beng- in the Bengals? What is your traditional mm, breakfast? No. Sorry, just before we move on to anime, you know, no, the this, perfect this is also part of my episode. It's breakfast. There's, there's not yeah. there's, uh, there's no particular bong breakfast that I can think of, man. Like there's like you guys do the Sa- Saudis do um, your breakfast foods real well. Plus, yeah. I, as you know, I'm a big fan of breakfast at non-breakfast hours. Mm. And there aren't many, there's really nothing I can think of off the top of my head that's like a typical bongified breakfast. But definitely not You could only get, yeah, definitely not Not upma? Yeah, no, okay. No, no, no. And there's specifically nothing that I can think of that's bong that you couldn't get anywhere else for breakfast food. I can think of a lot of like, you know, dinner foods right. that are very bong that you couldn't find most other places. But like... Mm. The best I can give you is a sausage with a lot of mustard. Nice. That's, 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 that's the bongest, that's the bongest you get. It's, it's a little bit of, you know, jolly oh, old Britannia. Then uh, and, Jishnu, uh, let me, let me read out the ingredients here listed on this uh, packet, which I'm having. Obviously it's made from suji, this is but thrilling. it says Bengal gram flour. One of the ingredients. There you go. 
I, I just want to say that um, there's a good segue in here somewhere. I, I think I know it. But before I just move on, I obviously we're not stereotyping uh, all South Indians by saying they all eat it. But there are very common, uh, there, there's a large intersection between breakfast foods amongst uh, the various states in the South. And they overlap in various uh, ways. So that's all I'm going to, it's going to, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to put it safely out there. You guys, right. you guys have all tuned in to Geek Food for Culture and you're getting it. I'm just saying. You said Geek right Food, now. so that's fine now. Geek Food just happened live in front of all of you. <laughs> not uh, live, not in front of everyone and okay. It's fine. On. It's it's and very live Nobody's right lifting anymore. Chalo. No one Do cares. Huh. Okay, so, so it, here's why I keep coming at you guys with anime. Because it's, you love us, huh? What? I, I mean, yeah, that's fine. But anime is great. And it's going to be such an in- integral part of overall geek culture in the future that everyone's going to have to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, think about it. it uh, it's been, what, f- more than 12 years now with the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. But before that, comic books were still kind of around, but not really in the mainstream. Right. And now they're here. Yes. If you look at the latest. Uh, news uh, that's going on out there in the world. There's a lot of protests, a lot of civic thought and th- things are going on, which will change everything. But here's, yeah. here's, who, here's a very interesting headline. Okay. On Twitter, uh, the K-pop uh, fan groups of the world hmm. swung white, the hashtag white lives matter away and like right. absolutely took it yeah. over and destroyed it. Because they're so organized as a fan group right, and they yeah. have so much more cultural power in the world today. True. Yeah, that's so true. Anime is... I don't know if you, yeah, sorry, I don't know if you saw that, uh, yeah. uh, that um, the Endgame clip where all of the troops kind of align with yeah. Cap. And it was like every person who, uh, you know, like whether it's Falcon or, you know, Black Panther and everyone, <laughs> they basically just captioned them with... Who is aligning with the Black Lives Matter movement? It was so funny because it's just like, you know, it's just different sections of society. And then, you know, when Wakanda kind of comes in, like at the back, it's just like K-pop, K-pop Twitter <laughs> stands, you know? And I was just like, oh, that's brilliant. That's so funny. And it was truly, it was weirdly emotional, man. It was great. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, continue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, it, this is exactly it. Like um, where, what we're going to see in the future, it's a trend that I think everyone has these a lot of people have been discussing, but it's coming to the fore now is the, is the world geeky, nerdy culture is kind of, it's turning into a confluence. We're all starting to meet up, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, we still haven't seen the real power of the anime community yet. So anime and manga are obviously two mediums that are very popular in Japan. Uh, manga is Japanese comic books created by Japanese authors, and they are subsequently turned into anime which is how a lot of people around the world tend to consume this media. Manga, however, is very important because it, it literally thrives on scan culture. So scanlations and all these other guys who literally uh, re- scan the manga in Japanese, put in the English and upload it for free. All right. Okay. And this has been going on for more than 20 years. Like I've been reading scans for a long time and it's it's Mm -hmm. so you've got this culture abroad outside of japan that has been consuming this uh on their own especially over the internet and finally all of this is being recognized because you have so many uh, over the air anime stream streaming services now you have crunchyroll you have funimation Mm -hmm. you have all these guys and uh people around the world are actually tuning in so if you check out Crunchyroll, there's Crunchyroll India as well. So that they have the, all the rights of, for India. Oh, uh, awesome. You know? This and is available only on, on the web or is it also on like, um, like TV apps and, and things like that, like Fire Stick? Yeah, exactly. So you have Crunchyroll um, mm-hmm. uh, video, uh, Android app. I have, a, I have Crunchyroll on my TV, for instance, my Android TV. Oh, okay. and, and it's like every other, uh, oh, like it's like, Every other streaming service, you pay like whatever amount you do, eight, nine dollars a month, and awesome. you have access to a vast library of titles. The anime business now, the industry rather, is worth over $21 billion. 
So it's only growing and it's only becoming bigger. So aside from the history and all of this stuff, I'm sure a lot of people already know about all of this. The the reason for this preface is very simple. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen very soon. We're going to see the anime community sort of show up like the K-pop community. And it's everyone's going to watch it. And there's a big reason for that. So I said I wanted to talk about anime, but I actually wanted to talk about Netflix and anime. Great. Okay, okay cool. So, so let at yeah, this juncture, ahead. let's take a let's take a quick break. And it was a very succinct introduction. So uh, we're going to come back. We'll talk about um, Netflix's anime selection and uh, perhaps some of your favorite things that you've been watching, Sid. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another awesome week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Paytm Money and Intel. We appreciate their support. It's been a really fun week, guys. We've had some great episodes on your old favorites. Cyrus says advertising is dead, edges and sledges. Football should ball had a really fun episode as well. Definitely do check it out. I'm sure you're going to enjoy yourselves. And with that, let's continue with your show. Hey, guys, we're back. Um, I'm with Sid and Jishnu. And um, Sid is just telling us about um, Netflix's anime category and what are the best uh and and why it's good and, or why it's bad? <laughs> why it's good? Okay, okay. yeah, this is Wait, important. Go. Why? Why is good? It? Tell me. Tell me. And what's good? good? Okay, I'll tell you why it's good. Uh, <laughs> no, no, so it is good. <laughs> first, 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 firstly, firstly, uh, Netflix has been trying to do uh, a lot of things with anime for a lot from the, their basically their inception. They've always tried to put anime in the categories that they have, uh, like the, of the programming that they have. And they start going into Netflix original animations, which we'll talk about a little later. But okay. here's, here's the real reason, uh, according to a lot of industry experts, as to why Netflix is focusing so much on anime. And they, they've, in fact, doubled down, especially since 2018 onwards. It's because Disney Plus has arrived. And they've ah, taken away mm. all of their titles and gone to their side of the Magic Kingdom. Right, and they've monopolized correct. all this stuff. So uh, you've lost Star Wars. You've lost Marvel. You've lost your access to great world, world, world known, world renowned rather evergreen animation classics, and the entire future of Western animation revolves around Disney and Pixar. And yeah, that's you've not we're well, not winning this fight. Yeah, I, sp- I suppose HBO Max also launching in America must have them even more like concerned about it. Well, yeah, especially now because yeah, because they have the entire Cartoon Network and DC Comics, like DC Animation Library as well. There you go. That's another chunk yeah. that uh, Netflix basically doesn't see that they're going to get any of these, they are foothold in any of these things. So what they've decided to do and what for some reason anim- Amazon Prime has also decided to do is double down on anime because nice. Japanese anime companies and publishers aren't too concerned about worldwide anime distribution. Like they tend to like, they over the since the 90s to now they've just picked on uh, certain markets like the US, Germany, things like that. So you will have like, uh, you know, uh, some of these companies opening up Kodansha Comics, for instance, they'll mm-hmm, open up mm-hmm. a streaming service and they'll do like German anime, German dub animation, stuff like that. So is there no behemoth like a Disney uh, that kind of consolidates all the anim- anime in Japan? No, because okay. uh, the anime in Japan, the anime production houses and manga companies are varied in nature. So there's like quite a few different titles and it's very segmented. So anime is not obviously not a monolith. You have shonen anime, uh, uh, shoujo anime. Antitrust law kind of kicking in. No, not anti. Yeah, well, it's not, it's more like according to taste. So the shoujo anime is the ones that we all know about. Dragon Ball, sorry, the shonen anime. Correct Mm. myself. Shonen anime is all the ones that we talk about all the time. Like Dragon Ball, uh, Bleach, Naruto. Nice, so yeah. shonen anime is all for 13 year old boys and basically teen boys. That's the category. Shoujo anime is for teen girls. And then there's Sinan anime, which is adult. And that's mm-hmm. for women and for men. So they have separate ones for those. It goes into all kinds of categories. For instance, like Doro He Doro, which I think I told Jishnu to, to read is mm-hmm. a sign in anime. It's not for kids as evidenced by the <laughs> yeah. random heavy amounts of gore, you know? Yeah. So yeah. 
just because of that, they've got different parts of the market and that's why they're different companies and they all have things. Yeah, of course, that makes sense. I mean, it's, it's based, anime is real, is not a genre, of course. It's a no, medium. Man. It's a medium, yeah. yeah. Just like animation itself. Um, I'm, I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but I want to go yeah. back to something you said before about the fact that right. um, n- only after the MCU is it, you know, something that you cannot argue about at all with the fact that now nerd culture is prominent as, as all hell and comic books are ubiquitous everywhere and people that didn't really give them the time of day now are are eating their hats. So do you think with anime eventually getting bigger and bigger and as if if you're right in saying that, you know, they break through like how K-pop is broken through, um, with the MCU as the best example, um, as sort of the golden goose for comic books and comic book lovers for the last, whatever, 75, 80, almost 100 years now, it took converting from one medium to the other. Like we said, anime is the medium, right? So yeah. Comic books had to be honed. It, it was a painful like 10, 15 year process of trying your Daredevils and Green Lantern movies and whatnot before they finally landed the nail on the head with um, the MCU before it became like, okay, now everybody has to agree that this works and this is a multi-billion dollar industry that we can continue making. Do you think anime is going to have to go through a similar teething process or do you think going to be able to retain it as a behemoth? in its original form because comic books mm. had to be made non-comic books and had to be made but comic anime movies. anime is already a, a visual medium and sit uh, correctly right, right, right. But, I mean, but I mean, like, do you think you're going to have to, like, you see, we've already been seeing dubbed versions of anime for a while, which uh. have been around and people that like it love it, as you said, but it still hasn't, like, broken the, the threshold, which the MCU had to really, you know, it had to, so not MCU, but movies had to take a while before they did that. Do you think they're going to stick to the guns and continue in the form that they are with dubbed over um, or even just subtitled uh, anime in the current form, or are they going to have to merge into something else? Like how comic books have it's, to be it's a, live action? It's a really good question. And uh, the, 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 the answer is kind of already unfolding uh, in the sense that the teething process has already been going on. I mean, anime has been adapting to American taste since the 80s. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we've dude, all been watching like Akira, it in India. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Um, We've been watching. That's it. kind of influenced so many movies in America. So much of American movie, like action filmmaking, has just been influenced by anime and, and movies like Akira and stuff, which was like 1987, 88, something like that. Yeah, I mean, Studio Ghibli doesn't consider itself as anime. That's and and you have like stuff from back then, uh, not just Osamu Tezuka, but stuff like Akira, which is just on its own. But yeah. without like to, I'm not. I don't want to gloss over it, but I just want to like move a little bit ahead so that we can get to the meat of the mm-hmm. matter here. But the point is, even since we were kids, we've had stuff like um, we've had uh, a lot of properties come to us, come to us over other channels. You know, we've had AXN give us anime. Mm-hmm. Cartoon Network had Toonami. You right. know, we had so much stuff from Toonami. Dragon Ball Z. Yep. has already been a huge hit in the in around the world in the 90s mm-hmm, yeah. so many last airbender as well yeah Avatar. last step ep- here's the thing last airbender is actually american animation in anime style that's mm, it's this right, we're right, going right. to get to this but my point okay. is there's not so much adapting and uh, understanding left now because they know this they've already been do- they've got their, their mcu moment was dragon ball z in the 90s so they've okay. been doing this stuff for a long time already you know uh in in the in the meantime, we had Naruto come and go, and Naruto was like a meme. Like now, you know, people are doing the Naruto run still today, and Naruto finished in like two thousand what twelve thirteen. You know, like yeah. uh, even further back. I mean, it, now I don't want to get into sure. uh, arguments with the Naruto stands because they're a very different breed, but their their popularity is undeniable. You know, uh, it, it's it's a cultural thing. You see people in every comic con around the world wearing Naruto uh, cosplay. Know? And cosplay yeah, itself is like a Japanese thing. It's not an American thing to start with. Yeah, yeah, that's you know? for sure. So uh, it's already been doing this adapted, adapting to um, to new tastes. And the thing is, what makes anime anime is it's Japanese. It's not from another country. But hmm. that's when Netflix is starting to make make people upset, but also oh. interest other people. So, for instance, Castlevania. Have you seen Castlevania's promos on Netflix? I, I've watched Castlevania. Castlevania, a lot of people call it an anime, but it's completely made in the West in anime yeah, style yeah. and it's made uh, by an American company. Yeah, it's so, this guy. What's his name? Um, who plays uh, uh, Dracula? Um, what's his name? Uh, guy who played uh, Thor and Oakenshield. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. Richard Armitage. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's so, awesome. so, so they have again. They have Japanese creators. They have like the Jap the showrunners Japanese. I mean, the staff is by and large Japanese. But but overall, this is a Western property. Castlevania is not Japanese. It's a, a Western company that is publishing it, and like these are the things that are starting to come into the picture. So people are questioning it. Is Agretsuko an anime? I love Agretsuko. Yeah, oh but is God. it an anime? Right. Not sure. I think not. I don't I know. No like, I, I, I think a lot of people would say no, because it's not Japanese at all. Like, there's no mm. Japanese dub of Agretsuko that we trans- transformed into English dubs and subtitles. Yeah, but uh, it, it's in Japanese, right? Because I don't, I mean, I don't watch it in English, that's for sure. Yeah, but uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it could have gone either way. They could have chosen right. to do it in English if they wanted to, because it's Netflix. So you're talking about this. basically like how we're reaching like a hybridization point you know, yeah. at large. Yeah. Well, right I mean, now with aggregators like Netflix kind of getting involved. Exactly. And Netflix is by far the most dynamic person in this industry. This industry has worked on slave labor. They basically, uh, whatever American comics go through, like Japanese comics go through three times that. They have to like, they have very tight schedules, very low <clears> payments. <throat> These people yeah. are heavily overworked. They're all burnt out. It's madness. It's the same with anime. The margins are super low. All these production houses and animators are literally killing themselves exactly like you would see in, in any Japanese trope in like, of, um, you know. <clears throat> yeah, Agretsuko is kind of like about that. About uh, that, yeah. As well, yeah. So yeah. I, I, I've always wondered, I mean, I feel like ma- manga and, and anime is is not just, this is not just like a, a, a style that people kind of adhere to, to or, or watch, you know. That is like one of their main forms of, literature right like manga is like how they learn like anything like yeah. uh, Shakespeare's in manga or yeah, like yeah. you know everything that they like like textbooks and stuff are in manga as well exactly. so it's like so that's just like um like the foremost medium in many ways so that I exactly. can imagine that so many people are in that it, industry exactly so. and you know the other thing is why I'm saying pointing out Jishnu that this is Japanese in nature is because when we consume American media we consume their culture in a very mm-hmm like overt fashion like right. there's a christmas episode there's a thanksgiving episode there's a graduation right. mm. episode there's yeah. flashbacks yeah. there's like um you know uh th- these are all very american things so mm-hmm. in anime you have the same kind of tropey nature you have a, a trip to the beach trip to the hot spring uh you know school fair like these right. are all like now you're basically and it, and this applies to everything. So it it applies yeah, to like, lots of random other concepts in anime that mm-hmm. aren't based around high schools. But they're like right. Naruto's Ninja Village will have a f- school festival because Japanese people have school festivals, and I know about it because I've been consuming their culture so much. Nice. So that's what I mean. Like this stuff also crosses over. We learn like Japanese like things. when you come to India, you know that Eid is Salman Khan movie. Exactly. That's how it is. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's coming out. It's going to happen, and <laughs> this is the thing. Like this is a, a real change in the, in all of these uh, in how we consume it so this is the setup what is netflix done okay so a lot of their originals we've already started to discuss agretsuko uh okay here we go <laughs> i was gonna say yeah. uh, that um we have uh, once again <laughs> dived into into the the meta commentary of anime but we should take another break uh, before you finally lay it down for us man oh yeah it's finally coming. lay it down and it's you coming. tell us just hit us with the names. I, I say, hey, let's talk about anime. You say, no, I'm going to tell you which ones are my favorite. That's what's going to okay, happen. Okay, done. After this break. Beta, did you know 79% of all scientists in NASA are Indian only? Look, India mein tax is only middle class. Hai. Everyone is just enjoying free, yaar. Aajkal ki youngsters are only interested in partying and enjoying. Unko desh ki padi nahi hai. Beta, you just marry your wife. After that, you can enjoy life like anything. I will tell you what this country needs. This country needs 15 years of dictatorship. That is the only, the only way to become a superpower. See the Chinese, how much they've progressed. So now, you've seen this WhatsApp forward? Dekha. So what's common between all of these statements? They're all absolutely rubbish. Fake WhatsApp forwards that spread like wildfire. And statements that defy any logic. They are here to debunk them all. Where your family WhatsApp groups? Worst nightmare. Where what happens when you read a book? 
basically we are just a bunch of guys who want to cut through the bullshit of everyone saying this how it won't be true so that the next time someone confidently squeezes out some whatsapp or twitter bs you will look them dead in the eye and go uncle please sit so join me joel and me tushar every mondays for a fresh new episode of uncle please sit hey guys we're back we're talking with uh, sid uh Jishnu and I are speaking with Sid and uh where he's telling us uh about uh what we should watch on Netflix in the anime business. I'm saying Jishnu I'm including you because both of us don't know that much about anime. And Sid is know. instructing. Damn thing. Us. He gave me homework. I saw two things. I don't know about What did you watch Jishnu? Yeah, why don't you start Jishnu? Tell us your, even, tell me your I can't impressions. Even say the names. Uh Doro Hidero? Yeah, Doro Hidoro, yeah. Yeah. Hidoro. Okay, I've not seen that one. What is it yeah. uh what is its English name? Does it have one? No. Uh, it didn't oh, show great. Yeah, it even better. Name. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to explain it to Tejas and then you tell me how wrong I am. It is oh, it. a man possessed by a crocodile type thing inside whose mouth is another man. Is this oh, man the dope. same man that was originally the man that turned into crocodile? Or is it p- perhaps a man who has put a spell on a man and made him a crocodile is he it's the, the villain it's the latter it's the latter yeah hey, i'm only well. one episode in calm down i don't yeah. know yet Ready? no you, you, you you've done it oh okay okay, okay <laughs> yeah. awesome okay awesome. good 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 um, and, nice. and they and they go around they go around trying to like fight some shadow people who i don't know yet who they are but they like can make doors happen like how dr right. strange makes like portals oh, happen i love doors they just make doors exactly. happen and doors then they great. go and then they go places The other one I saw I really did enjoy but I do have a question for you about that. The other okay. one was called Kaguya Sama? Kaguya yeah. Sama Love is War. Oh my god. You I see, love I've that show. Yeah, I've yeah, of course. I've been talking okay. about it for a year straight. Woo! Okay. Yeah, yeah literally please. Sid spoke to, spoke to us about uh, oh. told us to watch this show like maybe a year ago and I, I don't watch it after that. Sid, but, uh, <laughs> of course not. When uh, but then explain this to me. So there are two seasons on Netflix. Yeah. The first one is Kaguya Sama. I've not seen the second. The yeah. second one is Kaguya Sama. <laughs> There's a question mark. It's like what? <laughs> that's how do good, I differentiate? I love you know, it. I then it's like how that. do I how do I ask you like, hey, have you seen Kaguya Sama? Yes, I have. No, you haven't. You've seen Kaguya Sama. I, you know, I want to say I don't think I've ever seen anything like Kaguya Sama. Love is war, and I need to I need to specify that that is that is absolutely true because it deals with an interpersonal relationship that you know it's one of those instagram posts you know we need to talk about these things but nobody talks about these things mm-hmm. and this is a real thing in this yeah, show yeah. and it's just a relationship between these two people mm-hmm. who are in competition with each other but love each other yeah. and it's just like insane the 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 this is overthinking on yeah. crack yeah, and it's yeah. like so well it's so well written and it's so um, there's twists in every episode man mm-hmm. like you don't know how they're going to play it out but it's so well done and the twists are nothing it's just decisions in people's minds that's the whole show yeah. and it's like it's really really interesting and really great i mean tejas when are you overthinking more than when you're in love Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're the love I'm, guy. You you talk I'm, about this stuff all the time in your music. Uh, you know uh, what I, you know what it is. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just yes. Just a bit you're of a right. love guy as well. He knows what he's doing. Just yeah. is a love guy. He yeah. talks about the love in he, his. He says the love things before. I've heard him when he has yeah, guitar yeah. in hand. Yeah. So, like like they've already said, Kaguya Sama is between two people and their friends in their inner circle in the student body council of this one really super prestigious school, mm-hmm. and. it's these two people who clearly are totally into each other but neither of them wants to confess their feelings first because they both feel that if they do they'll be the lesser person in the relationship they'll be the weaker person yes oh my god what a concept it's, it's great i really everyone is right now nodding sagely and thinking true true yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, i i i thought of it as like why is beyond your years but then your body is physically un- incapable of dealing with the knowledge that you have Because Absolutely. everything they're saying is true, but they're but they're responding to it like a uh, irresponsible fourteen, fifteen year old, however old they are, like an adolescent kid. Yeah, yeah of course, exactly. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And and the reason why we all fit in so well is because a we've all been there. Yeah. Okay, we've all been exactly there. Mm-hmm. And whether you're fourteen year in love or you're thirty or in love or fifty or in love, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, like you just deal yes. with it differently. Yeah, you and you're that, you're probably overthinking it. You yeah. want to say all kinds of shit you probably don't know how to say, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, you don't want to go first because you'll feel like you'll get embarrassed or, you know, you, Oof, it will, yeah. you will ruin yourself and mm-hmm. in front of the person you love by screwing it up. Yep. So you don't want to be the one who gets embarrassed first. And well, what's insane is just that it's, it's like almost, it feels like a very high action drama. Like it feels like a intense courtroom drama, but it's actually just two people and this voiceovers, you know, and, yeah. and few lines of dialogue, you know, in between to kind of string it together. But it's just like, but it plays out like an action film. And I, I just it's, think that's insane. I, I saw, I saw a lot of like an arrested development kind of a tale <laughs> with the yeah, voiceover playing, with the voiceover playing that similar role of like the two of them freaking out. And then the voiceover being like, actually it wasn't. Yeah. yeah the, the narrator good. is a king in this show. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we have to acknowledge that. Amazing. Uh, this amazing. Is, this is one of those things I do like about, anime and the sort of the Japanese storytelling perspective, they seem much more invested in the characters than what the characters do or what the gag very is or what true. the bit is, you know? So true. they're almost always doing like very, very small things, you know, like someone got a new haircut and now mm-hmm. she's waiting for some, the uh, the guy is waiting for the girl to give them a compliment. And mm. what, what we're really finding out okay. is how insecure the guy is, for instance, or, you know, like it, where we know more about this character as a person than we do about, like, say a Seinfeld character, main character for the first two seasons of Seinfeld, you know, like mm. there's so much investment in these people right away. And this is yeah. in a lot of anime, you know, so. So say, uh, tell us some other examples of uh, some, shows that you want, want to recommend on stuff. Netflix. Yeah. Okay, so some of the great Netflix anime specials, uh, anime productions are, I think, they're one of their main breakthrough ones, especially in the community, was Devilman Crybaby. Now, this okay. one I, I need to get to myself because I was freaked out by it when I first saw it. But this okay. is actually based on an old anime that was came out in like the 70s and it was pretty ridiculous back then. But it's basically a guy who gets turned into a devil and it's his friend kind of corrupts him and turns him into a devil. But this guy has like, he's a very sensitive person. So he easily gets like, he is like, it says it in the name. He's a bit of a crybaby also, you know? (laughs) So that's the dynamic. But look, it's a very cool looking show because the animation looks amazing. Everything's very unorthodox. It's coming at you in angles you've never seen. Colors, everything is wonderful. And of course, it just hits you hard. So that's one. Another one that they've been working on is Baki which is uh, from an old, again, another sort of classic manga property called Grappler Baki. Uh, okay. It's a, it's again, it's like, it's a very like death tournament to the, to the uh, fight to your, um, fight to your doom. A Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat style, like very grisly, gory thing. But for nice. instance, my brother loves it because it's so hilarious uh, and mindless. And yet like, it's got something there. Like each of these characters are again, very they closely studied and then the fight scene happened it's just an explosion so you just are in awe of what's going on it's it's very irreverent and that's another reason to love it um another like these are these are just some of them that are out there but uh doro he doro i i just want to get back to it it's again like they just throw you into this world where like whatever jishnu was, was feeling was what i was feeling you know and that's what i love about this medium as well i continually come up against stories that I am absolutely unprepared for. Like I've been Mm. watching all this stuff for a long time, but I still get the same feeling of like, what is happening? Who is this guy? Where did this door come from? Is he a guy or is there a guy inside him or is he, there's a spell on him or whatever. (laughs) And frankly, once you hit the third episode, half this stuff kind of also comes to the fore, you know? So I don't want to spoil it, but if you want to watch more Jishnu, you will get some of these answers immediately, no, but you are on the right. For sure, dude. I'll probably start with Kaguya-sama. Yeah, go for dude, it. Ka- Kaguya-sama is incredible. I will say this though. I mean, like, I know this is a, a favorite, but I, even when I watch, I, I've tried to watch the classics. I'd say like Bleach and a bit of Naruto. Um, I've still not gotten to Attack on Titan, but I, I'm, I'm going to get to it. But uh, like Death Note is obviously, I mean, the thing that is so remarkable about it, and I understand now why people kind of, think it's such a you know it, why people get that it's such a classic and then why people were disappointed with the netflix like live action adaptation yeah um i also wanted to ask you a question about that but man the writing on that show is so incredible because you know it's just like twists and twists and twists you know like just the you, even the first like i'd say 20 episodes the, it just it's non-stop with like this game of cat and mouse between you know 
uh, Light and and uh, the 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 main detective. I can't remember his name. Um, but man, I- I- incredible writing. Uh, Sid, what is your take? Uh, I mean, and we have to close out the show. But what is your take on um, on why Netflix chose to do an American adaptation as opposed to just you know casting like uh, you know Asian characters and and just keep it true to the original. Uh, even though if they and if their reason is because they want American audiences to yeah. get into it but then American audiences already got into it which is why it exactly. deserves an adaptation it's, at all it's, it's kind of what Jishnu asked before they're just trying to do more of this they're just trying okay. to see what all they can do they're pushing all the buttons right now and seeing what comes out you know mm. Did so, you see the did you see the adaptation I did yeah it was horrible and, but it okay, was so funny as well you could it, watch it and was it horrible because, yeah, was oh, was really it bad. horrible because uh, because they did a poor job in ad- adapting it and it could have been better or was it just because it just isn't the same as the original? It's not the same and it's hard to adapt. And I, I don't like things getting adapted like that. It's the same with the Japanese. Uh, the Japanese people also have live action adaptations of their various anime and they also rarely ever work out well. Hmm. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Before we end it though, I have just mm-hmm. discovered a new show on, on, on Netflix. By the way, Netflix, as we have discovered, has also licensed a lot of anime, which is not the original anime. So there's, gonna, there's a whole list out there, which I encourage everyone to try because you have some of the best titles that are now available on Netflix. In, in, in India, there's no other way to watch this stuff. So you, you better do it. You better get in there. Nice. Just hit anime and see what happens. But there's one more that I want you guys to both check out. It's called Carol and Tuesday. And... Okay. I think it's kind of exactly uh, one of those things that would be, uh, which only you, which not just you guys, but like, it's one of those things that ne- that uh, anime sort of addresses super well. So this is about two girls who are struggling singer songwriters that come together and make a duo. And the music is fantastic. The, they sing in English. This is all happening. Uh, like all the music is in, in English, the music, the score, everything is next level. It's amazing and it's on mars so it's like terraformed <laughs> mars everyone now lives Love on it. mars and the music is fantastic one uh, carol plays the piano tuesday plays the guitar you guys will love a it. Classic. Is so it's it, like a it, biker mice from Mars, but it's like a singer song like from Mars. It's not at all. Are they singing in, in English it's not. because of I mean, not so, dubbed, he said, right? Huh? I said dubbed. 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 It, it's because not like, dubbed. It's in Japanese. So, so you're saying, but then I mean uh but so like the English the voice songs, actors sing in English. The Japanese so they, voice actors can sing in English. And they're right, right. But, fantastic. So then you're saying for the Japanese audiences, like the original production of this, they were following a Japanese show where the songs were being sung in English. Yeah. So it's basically, they I mean, made America. Wow, they've made like, like so they, this is all ha- they're, they're in a city called Little, New Brooklyn. So oh. it's all, it looks like America. Everyone's American. Ah. Okay. Oh. Uh, the stuff, the Finding signs, everything is in American, is in English basically. So the song book, that they're singing out of all the lyrics oh. are scratched out in like songbook fashion in English right. and they sing in English. They do everything else in Japanese. It's How super accessible. That, that, it's super that's so, nice. That's so interesting. So there, there are people in Japan watching this show that don't speak English that are watching this no, show listening to these they songs. Just love where it. They yeah. Just like they're doing exactly what we do when we watch that's what we do stuff. With, I mean, it's yeah. also like what everybody over that's not in Japan is listening to K-pop is listening to. It's like, yeah, but I don't have a clue what they're saying, but it I know the dance moves. Yeah, yeah I uh, found it. Yes, I'm going to watch the uh, shit yeah. out of it. I mean, okay. there's a scene there in the first episode. First of all, all the episodes are named after records. So the second episode is called Born to Run, for instance, you know. So Yo. uh, so there's a scene there in when they first really realize that they can play with each other. And it's just two people who are just trying to jam with each other. And they don't cut anything. They, they don't magically burst into song, which is in unison. So there's a little bit of a feeling out process. As, uh, as nice, you there's guys some know, authenticity to just, the... To the yeah. process. So Carol just sort of starts playing her chords, and you mean this is not like that Black Mirror episode where they dive into Miley Cyrus's <laughs> mind and, and find, find a G-sharp. and find a, G- a G sharp and then construct songs without her permission. Oh, there okay, is cool, a cool, cool, there, cool. there is a guy like that in the show, but I don't know what he does oh, yet. No. So I'm also just two episodes <laughs> in. But like, no, this looks, is the thing. Uh, I think there's something dude. for everybody out there, and I think you guys should also watch this and just tell me what you think because I don't know. I mean, I know because I have some idea about music, but. A lot of people cool, don't. Cool. So they're watching people start a music career in a new city, in a new planet. So it's still, <laughs> it's still like David Bowie. It's something you know? Jishu love and it, I have it. done so many it. times. Yeah. Lo- like watch it. It's amazing. These women have great voices. The music is on point. And I think you it's all my you guys should watch it. 
and perfect like, text so, me later. Uh, so on that note, Sid, thank you so much uh, for being on this episode and uh, telling us what to watch and giving us the lowdown on anime right now, especially contemporary times and how it's reflecting on different parts of the world. Uh, be sure to uh, mail us with your thoughts on anime. If you guys have any shows that you want to recommend to Sid as well and, and to us, uh, write into contactgeekfood at gmail.com. Um, yeah, we'll try and watch these and give you a review, Sid. Thanks, guys. Yeah, always a pleasure. Take it easy. Doodle-doo. Entertainment is like food for the brain. It's a window to culture and a great way to understand the world around us. The internet has changed what it means to be an entertainer, creating new storytellers with millions of fans. It has spawned a new breed, the story sellers, those behind the scenes creating the business for this ecosystem. They work with brands, platforms and channels who are keen to capitalize on an audience hungrier than ever for more stories. I am Vineet Kanabar and I have a ringside view to how stories are told and sold. On my show, I bring you creators, artists, executives and marketers for a freewheeling conversation around the business of entertainment. Tune in to Storytellers and Storysellers for personal stories, analysis and criticism every Thursday as I talk to the brightest minds telling or selling great stories today. Namaskar dear bandhu, my name is Ashish Vidyarthi. These are truly challenging times and in these times we need hope. Do take time to listen to my podcast Begin the Journey. Available on IVM Podcasts website app or wherever you listen to podcasts. Remember there is hope because this one life and we are alive. Hold up. 